so we have our self fixed string sheet metal designs with SOLIDWORKS. Uh, my past, I've done a lot of sheet metal designs with uh, conveyor belts and uh, systems like that. So I've done a few bit of this. Um, this, uh, when we get into this tab and slot stuff, this came about in 2018 is the, the new release. It was a big feature that they released in 2018. In 2019, they stepped up their game and they had uh, added a few more tools in their in the feature and we're going to go over some of those tools and what you can do with this um, feature. So many of you might see something like this in your design world, right? Uh, this is, you know, you have to, if you want these things to be kind of set in the right spot, you might be using a lot of clamping, some complex tooling to hold your parts in the right spot. Uh, you know, you might have to have more than three hands, right? So that's more than two people in order to do this kind of thing. You might have to have, you know, Jimmy hold one side, Tim hold another, and then you might have to tack in specific spots, right? Then you go back and you have to double check your measurements um, to make sure that nothing had moved while uh, your friends were holding your piece together while you tacked in some of these welds. Um, there's also a lot of trust when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, right? You have to make sure that no one's going to nuke your hand or smash it with a hammer or something like that. So um, there's a lot of trust that goes in with working with your teammates there. There's also repeatability challenges, right? So if we're making a bunch of these parts and then making sure that they're all 100% accurate, you got repeatability challenges if your tooling uh, is not set up right. It's also very time consuming. Notice how many clamps that this has got on this table. You know, that's a lot of time that goes in there to set those clamps up just right and to make sure you're not um, a few uh, inches off here or there. So we're going to look at some tools to re uh, help you uh, speed this thing up. Uh, we had designed uh, our part here in SOLIDWORKS and we're going to go through, you know, how we kind of made it. Um, a lot of options in there. It's not going to be 100% accurate like the other picture, but that's not the goal. The goal here is to show you how tab and slot can speed up some of these parameters. So with tab and slot, we have interlocking components. Um, if you want to think of like a puzzle piece, right? So if you make these tabs and slots a very specific um, design width and uh, that kind of stuff, it's only going to go together in one location. So that can help with errors, right? Where if it only goes together in one spot, we've just eliminated some erring. Um, we've also used, uh, you know, a lot of people use laser to cut out their parts and pieces. So if I can plug it into a laser, I just eliminated some human error, right? So if it can look like the CAD and then I can export it to it with the laser machine and it cuts it exactly how I have it modeled. Uh, again, getting rid of air and then I can make it repeatable. So then we get our repeatability is uh, a lot better. It's also cheaper, right? Because if I can use my laser machine to notch these holes out and cut these tabs and slots, um, it's a lot less on human resources, so thus everything becomes just a little cheaper. And by being cheaper, you can also make it quicker to market usually. Um, there's not a lot of people holding this and people holding that, so then we get this quicker to market. So in SOLIDWORKS now, we're going to get in there, we're going to cover these functionalities. So we're going to go over, you know, some basic sheet metal part, some sheet metal parameters that you'll find in there, some bend tables. We'll pull up a few bend tables uh, so you can kind of see how that works, how it's a little more automated than you might think. Uh, then we're getting to some multi-body design. If you ever messed with sheet metal, you guys know that it's multi-body design. We're not taking a part here and then inserting it into an assembly later on. That's not usually how it's done. We want to keep it in a one part file so we can uh, use some tables that are come with our drawing. Then we'll get into some flat pattern. You know, what does that look like? We'll dive into our tab and slot functionality. Then we'll see how a drawing looks. Uh, then we'll open We'll check out how it might work with weldments. Um, maybe you guys work with weldments and sheet metal. Uh, tab and slot can also be used in your weldments profiles as well. And we can get into assemblies and see how tab and slot intermix there. So let's dive into our SOLIDWORKS here. So the first thing I want to do here is just create a sketch, right? So I'm going to put a line in here. This is going to represent our back plate. Um, we're going to throw a few dimensions on this. Let me get this set up so we can all see it. I wanted to start, you know, with a very basic 
uh, sketch here. I'm going to put a few more sketches in this one. So here's our first sketch, and then we're going to do a second sketch. Right, so we have uh, not multi-lines in the sketch. We're definitely doing um, one sketch with a single link piece of geometry here. So just getting this guy kind of set up. Uh, had a few more dimensions to put in before we get crazy. Now we're going to do our third sketch. And here we're going to drop in this center line. Um, a lot of my new users don't really notice that you can drop a center line in and make it very useful later on. So we're going to put that, our second L bracket here. We're going to relate this back to our first sketch. See if I can't get this to work. Might have to rotate it a little. There we go. Then we can make these two lines uh, equal to each other. We'll go back to our normal view, and then we can use our trick here with using that center line, and then we can go to a diameter dimension here. So that would be our total width that we're going to use here. Again, not a lot of my newer students know that, so I wanted to bring that up. All right, so the next bit here is we're going to create our first base flange. Uh, this is where we get to set up all of our default sheet parameters. So you can see we can go up blind, up to vertex, mid-plane, just like uh, an extruded part. Uh, we can give this a specific length, as you would with an extruded part here. But then this is our first sheet metal part, so we're going to see a lot of base um, parameters here. So what is my gauge table might be, um, you know, if I don't want to use a gauge table, I can put in specific values. Uh, I'm going to pull up a, a k-factor inch sample that we have available for us. And you can see here we only have a gauge 4 and 5 available. And what the radiuses might be, we can also add auto relief and bend allowances. So let's pull up this gauge table and kind of see what that might look like. So I'm just going to copy this address by hitting that browse button and then open this thing up in a Windows Explorer. Let me bring that into view. And then I can open up the Excel table that this is reading from. So here's that Excel table that it's reading from. Notice it's k-factor, it's in steel, and gauge 4 and 5 are the only ones in this thing. Um, so if you have certain angles, um, radiuses that you want to control very specifically, you know, maybe a table is the way to go instead of putting it in manually. Um, this can eliminate, eliminate some errors that, you know, designers have put in there. So for all you CAD admins, this might be the way to go. You can see the thickness there for each different one. So let's get out of this. We'll probably dive into a different table as well so we can see a different form of a table. So here you can see you might have various different ones. So here's a steel table. Notice that there's more than just two now. So now we're all the way up to like, you know, gauge 20 I think I saw. Um, and it already has our default thickness value stashed in it. So let's pull that table up so we can see this one. So this is this table. Uh, notice that the K factor has got like a standard 0.5. It's in inches. And then we have, you know, our 3 gauge all the way down to 18 gauge, what the actual thickness of that gauge is, and then what the allowable bend radiuses are for those specific gauge uh, numbers and thicknesses. So a 3 gauge at the very top will only have a 0.25, a 0.5, and a 0.75 bend radius. Versus if I go down to the 18 gauge, Notice I have other options that are available. So that might be something that you want to incorporate into your design, right? Maybe you only have certain many dies or something like that, and you want to be able to eliminate uh, use case scenarios. So let's close this out and close this out. Oh, got to close this. And you can see here we can also go by bend you know, k-factor, bend deduction, we can default, you know, what kind of auto relief that we want to use. So here's our 14 gauge allowable uh, bend radiuses that we have put into our Excel table. So this is all of our default stuff that we're going to use for the rest of our part. Uh, if you do want to change that, you have to go into that sheet metal folder here. So that's this specific piece of sheet metal, and that would, this here is going to be if I need to change all my defaults. 
So once I set it to default the first time, I'm not going to mess with that for the most part unless uh, you know, your defaults have changed. So now we're going to go in and we're going to select our second sketch here and we're going to um, make this flange. We can go up to a vertex. I already have our one here, so I'm going to select a vertex here. And then we can also go to direction two. We can go up to a vertex to the other direction. So now those things are linked to each other. So if I change one, you guys know what happens. I can change the other automatically. And we're going to go to our third, uh, third base flange. And I'm going to set this up to another vertex. This vertex, I don't want to go to the back wall. I want to go into right about here because I don't want that part coming all the way to that wall. I'll get crashing. So don't want to do that. Notice that it has our defaults here. We can override them if we wanted to, but not in this case. We're just going to keep those defaults. So you can see here we have the one on top of the other. That's what we want. We don't want them crashing, of course. So let's go ahead and mirror the third base flange using the bodies, right? Can't do it individually, so we have to use a body. So here we pick our plane. Now we go on to go to our bodies here. This is very important. You can't mirror features using this. We have to use bodies. Very easy to, to do that. Now we'll go ahead and check out our cut list, right? We have uh, three, four bodies, but if you notice that two of them are the same. And we can check out our cut list, right? So if you want to know how long a piece is going to be, we have bounding box properties that do populate. So we can go to the cut list outer, and you can see it's right about 51 units long. If we go to our cut list item two, let's see if we can find the same one here. Uh, don't think that one's that's a zero. That there it is. So then we can have you can see this one sitting at like 75 units long. So even though we have uh, four bodies in here, you can see that they're actually grouped into specific units there. So the one with I got a one one and a two. So the two is going to have two of those bodies stuffed uh, in that folder. So if we want to flatten a part to see what it's going to look like as a flattened piece here for our laser machine, uh, we can easily hit select a body, hit flatten. We can view normal too, of course. And you can see here's our um, bend highlighted. We can get back out of that, and we can turn around. We can select a different body if we want to. We can flatten that one as well. Let's view it in normal too. And again, you can see here would be where my bend is located. So now we're getting to the tab and slot. This is going to be the kind of the meat and potatoes of this. Um, it's going to work kind of like weldments. Uh, we have our link groups together. We have an edge that we need to select. And then a back face. You know, what face is it going to go up to? So here we have kind of like some defaults that we have chosen um, in this case. You can you know, equally space these. We can go four to right? And you can see that the equally spaced, we can give these tabs different lengths if we want, right? That's kind of, it's kind of one of those uh, garbage dimensions. So we're going to get it pretty close and then we're going to um, give it a specific length, right? So then we can say up to the surface. That surface is going to be that pink area there and that's what it's going to go up to. So like an extrude up to surface is going to be the same thing. Um, We'll dive into that slot here in a minute, but we can do this offset. And what that offset is doing is it's moving the top and the bottom tabs in or a uh, little inward so they're not hanging right at the edge of our, um, yeah, right at the edge there. So you might want to bump those up or um, bring those in accordingly to your design. So now if we rotate this and we measure, right, we set up to surface and we select those two bodies. Down here in the corner will give us our distance of zero so you can tell if they are flush. That might be what your design is required to do. Uh, we're going to get to some other designs here in a second. If I try and edit, notice that it has two different slots tabs. So one's our tab and one's our slot. They are linked together. So uh, in order to edit, I have to select the tab. So let's go ahead and put in our second tab and slot over on this edge. So again, selecting the edge, selecting the back face here. It keeps all of our defaults just like the other one. But what I want to do is I might want to adjust something. 
right? So maybe our tabs are a little different on this one, right? Because if I adjust my tabs, um, it's going to be a unique piece, so I can't mess this up and put it in the wrong spot. I have different edge types here, so if I want to make a fillet, see my tab now has a fillet versus a chamfer. I can give it a specific distance, how I want that to be manipulated. So here I'm going to bump that up. I might go a little overboard here with my spacing, but that's okay. You guys kind of see that. And I want to be very transparent that I'm not making this 100% accurate. So here's where I get into my um, spacing. So right now it's got a .03 spacing. I want to adjust this. Oop, hitting the wrong keys here. So right now I got a .06. I can adjust the height and width to be the same, or I can actually make them equal offsets. So they're pretty large right now for this specific case. So when I say OK, you can see that I have a pretty large opening. Um, again, it may or may not be what you guys want, but if I measure between those faces, I get that .06 down here. So it's .06 each way, not as the total. So now let's go ahead and try and edit one of those. So if I hit that tab, I can edit the feature. If I try and edit the slot, I will get an error, and it says I must use the, um, the slot feature, not the tab. Or I need to use the tab, not the slot feature. Excuse me. So here I'm going to go roll down, and I'm going to edit the corner relief. This right here is a new 28, oh, sorry, 2019 feature set. Um, if you have 18, you're not going to be able to see this button. But what they do is it was always square, but now they allow us to do fillets, chamfers, and circular edges. So here I just change it to be the fillet. Again, I have it pretty big so we can see all those cool features. So let's go ahead and add another tab and slot to this other edge over here. And you kind of see it's very time-saving. If you were trying to do this manually, you'd have to build the slots, do convert entities, um, do an offset, that kind of stuff. This is all automated. So here we can put in a chamfer, and let's check out how a chamfer is going to look on our corners. So if we zoom in here, you can see that that's got a nice chamfered edge at our value. Um, so let's go ahead and edit that, and I'll show you the last uh, relief type that we can do here. And it's going to have put in some circles at the corners. Give this a nice round value for us. And you can see it just puts in like little circles here instead. So now I'm going to put in a fourth tab and slot on our last corner. So you got to select an edge, and then again a back face here. Um, this time we are going to roll down, and instead of up to surface, I'm going to change that. So we can go offset from surface, or a blind if we wanted to. So if we want to do an offset from surface, we can put in some value here. Again, keeping it kind of large so that we can definitely see this. There we go. So I want to kind of kick it sideways so we can do it. Um, we don't want to reverse that direction. So, it, so we're doing that 0.25 is going to be offset from that face. Um, longer, right? So if you needed some tabs that really extruded past your design, you could do something like that. Um, if we edit the feature, something that's new is we can actually make this shallower. So if you wanted to make shallower tabs, um, you can put them together and then what we used to do in the past is we would make them shallow and then we would come back and do a fill weld. Um, but we just fill in that pocket with weld so that would stick really nice. Um, the bad part was is once you did that fill weld, it, uh, it was kind of a bear if you messed up or you need to take it apart. So here's my shallower tab. So if I wanted to come in there um, and fill weld that out, I could. So you can see that's that 0.125 offset that I gave it, um, or 0.1. So that's kind of some uh, it's a basic functionality here. So let's create a few more slots in the back. So let me get this sketch going, and uh, we'll pattern this. So if you don't know exactly how your design is going to go, you can rotate. You can grab this arrow. Hold on, I can 
it's a little tricky sometimes if you're off at an angle right there we go so now you can actually grab that arrow and you can pull it to a specific you know close to your uh, requirements and then type in a final number uh, that's what you want to do there um, so now let's get that kind of anchored away now we can pattern this so we're going to grab this edge flange here and then we're going to give it some patterns so it looks like my Pattern's not a 100% pre-set up here, so give me a second while I fill in some information. And spacing and instances, this is what I want. We just want to jump this up too and bump this up a different uh, value here. There we go. Now a fun little feature here is when we get into our edge flange. If you had two edge flanges that needed to be joined up, I can select an edge flange and then for my flange length I can say up to uh, edge and merge here. So if you had it on two different angles per se or um, you know, you just wanted to connect two different pieces, this up to edge and merge option is a great tool. Um, not a lot of people know that it exists and they're always trying to figure this out some kind of mathematical using the angle buttons and such. Um, you can avoid all of that by using this functionality here. So we just joined up this and now we have one body. So that's going to be the trick here, our tab and slot. It's going to be one body. So when we select this edge and this face here, we can adjust some offsets you know just how many that we might need here up to surface should be fine and we'll drop this down a little bit again because it's equal offset only has to adjust the one value and then we're going to put in a new group so now new group is going to be associated you know it's going to have its own i can change this individually or i can link them together so that if i change one they will both change um, this is a so as you can see here, if I point, push that up to 0.9, my, all those values then change because they're linked. So now it's only one feature here instead of two, right? So I just bypass, you know, an additional feature. Um, so keeping that in mind too can be very useful. You can rename these if you wanted to, so you don't always have to be tab and slot, tab five. You can uh, name it to be something a little bit more relevant. Um, and we can flatten this out. So here's what our tabs will then look like. We can zoom in on there. You can see that the bounding box is still there. It gives us the full bounding box and where our bends are going to be located here and here. Oop, that's a little wrong ISO, but spin that accordingly so we get a better view here. So if you need to export this to a DXF, you can right click on a part and we can go down to export DXF after uh, we flatten it. There we go. So then we'll kick this out to a DXF. You might need to do this if you have um, specific CAM software or you know trying to manually do some programming. Um, if you guys are on subscription, you do have access to SolidWorks CAM. So keep that in mind for this kind of thing. You wouldn't have to do this step if you had um, that functionality in your arsenal. So if I need to remove a few entities, I could do that. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to save this out, and I can then bring that into my machine later on. So let's check out how do we do a drawing. So I'm just going to say make drawing from our part here. And I'm going to bring in an ISO view. It's a little large for my sheet scale, so let's adjust that. Move this to the side here. And then we can go to our uh, tables and our bill of materials. I'm just going to say OK and accept the defaults here. So now I can also auto balloon that and it looks like my descriptions of those sheet metals. I can add different or more details if I wanted to. So this here um, we're going to move into how do we get our just a specific body, right? So we're going to select this body. We'll say OK. You can see it comes in as a formed piece here. Um, if I copy this view and I stamp it down here, I can select it, go to my properties, and say use the flatten view and say OK. So if I also use my balloon, you can see that that brings up a 2, which is also linked back to our first sheet, which is the same 2 that is located here. So that just kind of wraps up, you know, how can we go back from one body to another, use it on a drawing, 
Um, again, if you had different bomb templates, uh, you can use that. This is just a standard one that comes with uh, SolidWorks. So. so tab and slot is not just for straight bodies, but you can use it for circular parts. So in this case here, right, here's where our tab and slots might look like, and then here would be the final product. You know, if I needed to roll this somehow, I can do that and keep everything very fine as far as my tolerances might be, right? If you start rolling parts, you know how hard that can be. But if you had your tab and slot set up, you know exactly where it needed to end up. Uh, tab and slot is not just for sheet metal, but it is there for weldments as well. So here's my weldment part that I pulled up. Um, if I zoom in here and I use my exploded view real quick, you can see that uh, not only is it sheet metal, but I have my tab and slots is also there for um, my weldments. So if I had this gusset, I needed to make sure it's not going to move. I can tab and slot the gusset along with my sheet metal top plate and my weldment uh, support beam there. So again, no more clamping, holding, uh, any of that stuff. So here's a pattern and mirror. Um, so let's go ahead and highlight some of those. So here's my tab and slot and where they are located on my piece here. You can see that uh, two different parts in this thing. I have the base plate and the ring. Um, and you can see that the tab and slot is located in different locations. So um, let's go and see this a little different. So here's how it might be exploded and where those things might end up. Again, by keeping them you know, different lengths and stuff, I can only clock this in one fashion, right? So I want, if this was needed to be in a specific location, you might have different slots and different tabs so that way it can only go together in one way. So here's my tab and slot. You can see that they are highlighted what that one tab and that one slot would do. Uh, it is an in-context reference, so um, it is linking the two together. Same with this where we can actually make that and then we can pattern that around. And then we have another one here, which we then mirrored across to the other side. So let's see. I'm not going to do it. I just want to be able to show you in a little bit more uh, real space what's kind of going on here. So here's my tabs and the base plate and the assembly. So if I edit this feature, you can see that we're uh, in one part and we're seeing the shadowing of another. So we actually went into that part in, ref in context with the assembly. So if we check out our uh, circular pattern, we open up our part as itself, and you can kind of check this out. Again, a lot of in-context reference that are going on here. Uh, you can do a seam here, so if you need to make sure that these end up in the right spot. So that is not in context, that is in the part itself. We'll swoop, go back to the assembly here, and we'll go back to the, the top level. So that is some basic functionality of why you might want to start using this tab and slot feature. Um, we did go over some basic sheet metal part, how to make it. Again, not using big, fat, um, you know, if we want to call it closed sketches. We're just using, you know, lines and stuff. And we're using, we're extruding that line into sheet metal parameters. Then we're checking out some bend tables. Again, that's optional. That is not needed. You can actually fill out all that bend table stuff as uh, you wanted to. If you had very specific stuff from different manufacturing or whatever, uh, you can do that. Or you can take that manufacturing and put it into a bend table stash it on the server so that everybody can use the exact same thing. That's usually what that is highlighted for. Uh, we did get to the multi-body design and how to use multi-body design inside of a drawing in case you needed to show one specific body and be able to bubble that. Um, then we went to the flat pattern, how to export that as DXF. We just showed a lot of tab and slot functionality. So if you had something a little more complex like this part, you can see where adding tabs and slots would definitely be a lot better. There's not a lot of measuring. Click this together, you weld it up, you may grind off a few extraneous welds, but you're pretty much done, right? Um, then we said that you know you can use this in your weldments. Uh, that's very popular, being able to click all this stuff together uh, in a weldment tube. And then how do you use tab and slots in assembly?
thanks for your interest in this uh, product. Um, hopefully you guys can go out and hopefully you guys can go out and use this uh, functionality a little more and that you guys know that it exists and kind of what you're getting into. Chris, I'll toss it back to you. Um, Excellent. Thank you very much, Craig. Uh, thank you for everyone for attending. Uh, again, the webcast is recorded. It will be uploaded to the CATI YouTube channel. Um, it'll be up there in a couple of days. You know, if you have any questions about this functionality, please, uh, please send them in. You know, you can give us a call. Um, I'll comment on a couple of the questions here. The functionality is in both SOLIDWORKS 2018 and 2019. It was introduced in 18, and it got some really nice further enhancements inside of SOLIDWORKS 2019. Another question I see that popped up here. Uh, yeah, you can, you can have different thicknesses for the different sheet metal multi-bodied parts. So before we let everyone go, I just want to uh, mention that we do have a few webcasts coming up for the remainder of the year. So for the rest of December, on the 11th, we have a PDM webcast. On the 13th, we've got a catapult session where we're going to be talking about um, you know, the upgrade. A lot of people will be upgrading to 2019 next year. I'm going to talk about that. That's going to be a good one. We've got a drive works, and our final will be talking about 3D printing and modifying that CAD geometry and grab CAD print. So, again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you very much, Craig, for the presentation for putting that together. And if we don't see you guys in the uh, in a future webcast, everybody have a, a great holiday season and a great New Year. not needed, you can actually fill out all that Venn table stuff as uh, you wanted to. If you had very specific stuff from different manufacturing or whatever, uh, you can do that or you can take that manufacturing and put it into a Venn table, stash it on the server so that everybody can use the exact same thing. That's usually what that is highlighted for. Uh, we did get to the multi-body design and how to use multi-body design inside of a drawing in case you needed to show one specific body and be able to bubble that. Um, then we went to the flat pattern, how to export that as DXF. We just showed a lot of tab and slot functionality. So if you had something a little more complex like this part, you can see where adding tabs and slots would definitely be a lot better. There's not a lot of measuring. Click this together, you weld it up. You may grind off a few extraneous welds, but you're pretty much done, right? Um, then we said that you, know, you can use this in your weldments. Uh, that's very popular, being able to click all this stuff together uh, in a weldment tube, and then how do you use tab and slots in assembly? Thanks for your interest in this uh, product. Um, hopefully, you guys, hopefully you guys can go out and use this uh, functionality a little more, and that you guys know that it exists and kind of what you're getting into. Chris, I'll toss it back to you. Um, Excellent. Thank you very much, Craig. Uh, thank you for everyone for attending. You know, if you have any questions about this functionality, please, uh, please send them in. You know, you can give us a call. Um, I'll comment on a couple of the questions here. The functionality is in both SOLIDWORKS 2018 and 2019. It was introduced in 18, and it got some really nice further enhancements inside of SOLIDWORKS 2019. Another question I see that popped up here. Uh, yeah, you can, you can have different thicknesses for the different sheet metal multi-bodied parts. So before we let everyone go, I just want to uh, mention that we do have a few webcasts coming up for the remainder of the year. So for the rest of December, on the 11th, we have a PDM webcast. On the 13th, we've got a catapult session where we're going to be talking about um, you know, the upgrade. A lot of people will be upgrading to 2019 next year. I'm going to talk about that. 
That's going to be a good one. Got a drive works, and our final will be talking about 3D printing and modifying that CAD geometry in GrabCAD print. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you very much, Craig, for the presentation for putting that together. And if we don't see you guys in the uh, in a future webcast, everybody have a, a great holiday season and a great new year.